Good morning. Good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, who calls to each and every one of us, I greet you. I welcome you to the service of worship. We gather here at St. James Church, and we gather through our online service to worship and to praise God. Please be seated. This time I would draw your attention to the life and work of our church, found printed in our order of service and the announcements. First, as always, of course, is a warm welcome to any and all who might be visiting with us. If you are visiting or are new to the congregation, please make yourselves known to those around you and to me before you leave. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time in the online service, welcome. And uh, if you'd like to leave a comment, we'd love to hear from you as well. Turn your attention to a couple of the announcements which are found printed on the back of our order of service today. Uh, Thursday, just a couple of uh, scheduling changes. Usually choir would meet at seven, uh, but we've got the week of Christian, uh, prayer for Christian unity service then. So uh, six o'clock is the time for choir practice. At seven o'clock, uh, we are gathering uh, fellow Christians uh, for their week of prayer for Christian unity service here at St. James. Uh, we're pleased to have uh, Bishop Kirkpatrick who will be, uh, it's interesting because I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what he's gonna say because I say he's going to be giving the sermon, but St. Ninian's announced this morning that he's going to be giving the homily. So it's interesting to see how long he's going to go. And it would be good to hear from him. Uh, I am looking for a little help at that service. Uh, I would like a couple of people to greet, and we're going to have a, a smaller kind of like coffee time uh, in the meeting room immediately following, if I could have some people to help with that. If you're able to, please let me know uh, after the service. Uh, the other announcements are pretty much for your information, and I would draw them to your attention and action as appropriate. Um, there is no children's worship this morning um, because, unfortunately, the people who are leading it are sick. There are special coloring activity bulletins at the back, as well as uh, bags of good, quiet toys to play with. Um, and it's great to have the kids with us. Any other announcements or notices to come before us at this time? Not hearing any, I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our introit. to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen you. For darkness shall cover the earth. And the darkness of the peace. But the Lord will arise upon you. And the glory of God will appear upon you. Nations shall come to your light. And the kings to rise from your home. Let us pray together. Merciful God, as we come into your presence, we make no boasts, we make no corner on truth, we make no criticisms of others, we claim no spiritual or moral advantage. Instead, we open ourselves to your grace, asking for wisdom, guidance, and new life through Jesus Christ, our friend and our redeemer. Amen. Our opening hymn in Voices United 562, Jesus Calls Us. Oh, oh, oh. 
seated. There's a person in the Bible, in the Old Testament, called Samuel. Anybody remember anything about Samuel? Well, there's actually books of the Bible named after him. He was an incredible fellow. Someone behind me said they remembered something about Samuel. What do you remember about Samuel? Oh, now everyone's going to be shy. Samuel was a prophet of God, which means he spoke for God, and he called the people, and he worked with the kings, actually set up the kings, and he worked with them, and he was just a towering figure of faith. But he was also, at one point, a little boy. And he lived in a strange place. He lived in the temple. He lived in the church at the time. And one day, the Bible tells us, he, was, he worked with Eli. I need to mention that. Sorry. He worked with Eli the priest. And one day, Samuel was lying. It was night. He'd gone to sleep. And he heard a voice. You know what the voice said? Samuel. Samuel. You know what Samuel did? He did the logical thing. What would you do? I'd get up and I went to see Eli. And he woke Eli up and he said, Eli, I heard you calling. What do you want? And Eli said, didn't call for you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. And a little while later, he heard Samuel. Samuel, and he did what any of us would do, which is what? He got up, he went into Eli, he said, Eli, what is it? What do you want? And Eli said, oh, no, 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 I didn't call you. But then it clicked for Eli. And he said, maybe it's God calling you. So next time you hear that, just say, here I am, Lord. And how do you suppose Samuel thought about that? Well, I bet, yeah, I bet he was a bit skeptical too, but okay. So Samuel gets back, settles down, probably asleep. Samuel. Samuel. And he gets up, but he doesn't rush to Eli. What does he say? He says, here I am, Lord. And God speaks to Samuel telling him how his life will unfold. Two things for us to remember. First is, sometimes we hear right, but we don't understand it. We hear the message. We hear the good news. We hear what we're supposed to do, but we get it kind of garbled. And that's when we need the second thing, which is someone else to help us sort it out. And two things to remember from that lesson. And also a third, to remember that from that point, Samuel grew into that person that I started talking about, that great prophet, that when he died, the whole nation mourned his passing because he was so beloved to them. Why don't we join our hearts together and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite you to remain seated as we sing from our coil bound more voices. Hush, hush. Hush, all God's children, hush. Won't you listen? Somebody's calling my name. Hush, all God's children, hush. Won't you listen? Somebody's calling my name. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? Hush, all God's children, hush. 
won't you listen? Somebody's calling my name. Hush, all God's children, hush. Won't you listen? Somebody's calling my name. Hush, all God's children, hush. Won't you listen? Somebody's calling my name. As we prepare our hearts for scripture, let us pray. God of life and light eternal, shine forth in the words proclaimed this day that we might see your way open before us as we walk together in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Responsive reading 139 of Psalm 139, which is found on page 861 of our Voices United. God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You discern my path and places of rest. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it, O oh God, completely. You guard me from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Where can I escape from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I take wing with the dawn and slight at the sea's farthest in inlets, where also will be your will If I say, let the darkness cover me and my day be turned to night. God, you have searched me, you know me through and through. It is you who formed my inward parts, you fashioned me in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being fashioned in secret, intricately woven in the mystery of clay. How deep your designs are to me, O God, how great their number. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Watch closely, lest I follow a path of error. Testament reading is from the first book of Samuel, the beginning of chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I didn't call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. 
Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I didn't call my son. Lie down again. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord had called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The New Testament reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 12 to 20. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say food is for the stomach and stomach is for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. The Gospel of Jesus according to John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. May God bless to us a further understanding of these words and to the name of God be eternal glory and honor and praise. Amen.
worked at a summer camp for kids at risk the July after I graduated high school. The work was hard and draining, but it was rewarding and meaningful. Yet the truth was that it didn't pay that much, and in the final week, I wasn't sure how I was going to afford school that fall. And then in the middle of a staff meeting, I got called to the phone. And a friend of mine offered me a job for the rest of the summer, which was going to pay enough so that I could make ends meet. After the phone call, I quietly slipped back into the staff meeting without saying a word. But I soon noticed that everyone had stopped talking and were staring at me. Until finally the camp director stopped the meeting and said, Peter, for heaven's sakes, tell us what the news is that's making you smile like that so we can get back to work. Which I gladly did. Philip meets Jesus. The gospel doesn't give us a lot of details, just that Jesus calls Philip to follow, and he does. And we're told that Philip finds in Jesus what he's hoping for and what he's expecting. That in Jesus, Philip sees God at work and the fulfillment of what Moses and the prophets promise. And he's filled with excitement and hope and energy. We're here at this service of worship because we believe. We believe that there is a God, that through Jesus there is mercy and grace, and that the Holy Spirit is active in the world. And honestly, for most of us, there's more than just belief. We've also lived out that truth. We've discovered something more, something deeper, something better for our lives because of Jesus, through prayer and in the words of Scripture. We have faith, and that changes everything. And the truth is that even if we never tell another soul about Jesus, the fact is that they can tell. They can tell by looking at our actions, by seeing our relationships, by watching how we live. And the truth is, some will wonder and never say anything. But others will ask. And we'll find ourselves in the situation where we need to tell them about Jesus, about God, the church, and our faith. Philip is so filled with excitement that he tells Nathanael about Jesus. And Nathanael is less than enthusiastic. Nathanael dismisses Jesus by saying, can anything good come from Nazareth? And the answer Philip gives is important for us to hear. Because Philip doesn't defend Nazareth or get upset that Nathanael doesn't believe him or even start preaching about all the things that Jesus has done. No, Philip replies to the disbelief with three simple words. Come and see. And there's more to the lesson, but I want to stick with those words for a moment because when people find out that we go to church, when they discover we have faith, even when they ask us what we believe, Sometimes they'll be dismissive or even disparaging. And it feels awful when they do that. Because we find meaning here. We find value in the Bible and Jesus and the life of the church. We find that we need. We find what we need in prayer and the faith that others show us. And it's hard to have people scoff at what we hold dear to our hearts. It's difficult to not get angry and defensive when they dismiss what we believe and trust to be true. I get that. Because as someone who wears a collar, I get the scorn and anger all the time. But you know something? How we answer the rejection of others, how we react when people don't believe us when we share our faith, is and of itself a powerful witness to what we believe. So whenever we feel upset or defensive because of what others say about our faith, we need to remember the example of Philip. He tells what he believes and knows in his heart. And when Nathaniel is skeptical, Philip simply points to Jesus. He trusts that Nathaniel will find in Jesus what Philip found in Jesus. He believes that Jesus will answer the doubt, the disbelief, the questions that Nathaniel brings. Because the truth is that our best witness as disciples is to simply tell and share our experience to point to Jesus. That's why Philip doesn't try to answer Nathaniel's question and scorn about Nazareth. 
Because you know the truth is that the place wasn't known as holy or virtuous or scholarly. It was a backward little town in a quiet corner of the land. And instead of getting sucked into debating his friend, Philip simply points to Jesus with the invitation that if Nathaniel wants to know, he can come and see for himself. So share what you believe and what's important to you in faith. And if people raise problems with the church or Christianity, take a deep breath and realize that they may have good reasons. Their difficulty about faith is not a rejection of you, but a rejection of the hatred and bigotry and ignorance that they've experienced. I've certainly met people who were hurt by what happened in churches and who felt excluded and rejected by Christian belief. You know what I do in those situations? I tend to apologize after I agree with them. I tell them that I'm sorry, and honestly, I hate that there are churches where people, because of their past or skin color or who they love or for whatever reason, don't feel welcome. I'm sorry, and I hate that there are religious people who hold on to ideas that exclude and divide and diminish those hungering for the good news. And I admit that I can't change what's happened to those people, but I can share my belief that God's love reaches for all of us. And my belief that through Jesus Christ, there is a place for all in God's kingdom. And, and this is important, I point not to how we get it wrong, but to how Jesus gets it right. So point to Jesus in your life. Point to Jesus so that others can come and discover for themselves the truth they need, the way which leads forward and the life which is richer and more complete than the one they're living now. Which brings us back to our lesson. Nathaniel comes to Jesus at Philip's invitation, and he's amazed. He's amazed because when he meets Jesus, he discovers the promise of God is happening right in front of his eyes. He hears Jesus and believes that Jesus is the one sent from God and the true king for his people. Nathaniel finds faith. But there's more, because Jesus tells him that what he's experienced, what he has known, is only the start. For sometimes we experience forgiveness, we find joy, discover hope, know strength, and we feel God at work in our lives, and we're amazed, we're excited and hopeful. And then Jesus whispers to us the surprise of the good news, that the blessings we know now are only the beginning. For come and see is not only the invitation when we don't know Jesus so we can believe. Come and see is the way that we discover Jesus in our lives after we have faith. Come and see is the path believers follow to learn and grow and be shaped into the people of God. For the invitation of Jesus is not to come to faith and then go no further. No, we're called to follow Jesus now and always and discover each and every day the way which God opens for us, which brings heaven into our lives and into our world. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in hymn number 567, Will You Come and Follow Me?
us, sometimes by name, sometimes in the dark, sometimes in quiet moments? Do we respond with an enthusiastic, here I am? Do we respond to our neighbors and our community with an enthusiastic, here I am? The gifts we offer through the church and the gifts that the church offers are one of the ways that we answer, here I am. As faithful stewards, we give generously of our resources, our time, and our skills. Let us listen now for our minute for mission. Imagine being forced to leave your home, set adrift, hoping to find a place to land, somewhere safe to land so you can rebuild your life. There's this huge misconception that refugees choose to be refugees, says Chris and Alvarez, refugee support at the United Church of Canada. It's not a choice. It's something they're forced into. It's a reality that is faced by millions of refugees, and it's a reality that is becoming more and more prominent. More people are displaced today than ever before. 117.2 million, says the UN Refugee Agency. That's the equivalent of three Canadas. There are many causes, human conflict, climate change, human rights, violations, and more. We can help. Your gifts provide food, water, sanitation, and social support to people forced to flee their homes. Mission and Service creates educational and confidence-building programs in refugee camps. Mission and Service also helps refugees find new homes. Congregations form support groups together to sponsor the refugee, Alvarez explains. What Mission and Service allows is for them to sponsor through their own congregation. She tells one story of a sponsor who renovated their basement after it flooded and immediately planned to sponsor a refugee in the space. Who thinks like that, Alvarez exclaims with wonder and awe. It's just so beautiful. The refugee stayed with his sponsors for years and they became an adopted family to one another. The sponsor told me, we have no kids, so this was an unexpected blessing, Alvarez recalls, tearing up. That's one example of someone opening their home and their heart and allowing themselves to be transformed. When we help protect one refugee from persecution, death, or years in a refugee camp, we save the world for that one person and just maybe for ourselves too. Bringing to mind the gifts that we have offered this day and the actions and work of our church, let us dedicate it all to God, let us pray. Most generous and gracious God, we pray that the gifts we give today will go further in your world than we can imagine. Bless these gifts, bless all who are working to help those who are refugees. For we ask this and everything in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'd invite you to join with me in our offertory response. with everything we hold in our hearts. Let us pray. Eternal and merciful God, we pray today for those individuals in our society who, whether they intend to be or not, are looked upon as role models, who influence by their words and actions the lives of many, that they may build up our society and encourage those who look up to them to create a more fair and just world. We pray for those who are part of the entertainment industry, who sing the songs, who act the roles, who walk the red carpets, that through their hearts they might help us better see the good and the evil around us. We pray for those who are sports stars, who may watch both on and off the playing field, that they may live out values that transcend winning 
or losing a game. We pray for those who represent us in the halls of government, whose public decisions influence the laws of the land, and whose personal decisions affect the way that citizens look upon the government. We pray that they might always act for the greater good, no matter what the political climate or cost. We pray for ourselves as well and each other, knowing that there are people, there are children and youth, adults and seniors, who look to us to show them the way to live as followers of Jesus. Help each and every one of us to share your love, grace and mercy with the words we speak and the way we live in our lives each day. Merciful God, we pray for help to know how to respond and to show our faith in the face of difficult news and events in our world. For we pray for the people of Palestine and Israel, of Ukraine and Russia. We pray for those displaced by war and violence and economic despair. We remember the homeless as winter settles in across Canada. For we pray as your people, for ourselves and others, as we lift up our concerns and our thanks in the silence of this church. Eternal God, in your love and by your grace, answer and let your way shine forth in our lives as we follow in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn, 509 in Voices United, Here I Am, Lord.
Having heard God's word, go forth now to proclaim it. Hold God's people in your heart and use your words and example to shine with the light of Christ. And as you go, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. For God opens up the path before you and walks with you this day and all of your days. Amen. Thank you.